let me now uh, come to Felix um, Kwache Ufusu. I want to get it right because, you know, sometimes, sometimes I mix yes. up. <laughs> sometimes it's Felix Ufusu Kwache and then sometimes, yeah, Felix. But it's Kwache Ufusu. Yes. I believe so. Now, do you know Oliver personally? Um, no, I do not. Um, you don't know him personally? I've met him only once. But okay. even that was very, very brief. I... I was uh, scheduled to be on a, a program on a sister TV station. So apparently he was on an earlier segment. Okay. So we just met at the entrance. As he was getting out, I was going and we just said hello. Right. So that's about the only time that I've seen him. Right. Yeah. And I'm sure you've been following what's happening with him. He made a post. The police has arrested him um, at the Kotokan. He was actually picked up at the Kotokan International, International Airport. He arrived around 4.20. He was picked up around 5.20. And um, he sent a text to his family and said, some guys... I hear they've picked him up from the airport. They're sending me to an unknown destination. Um, do you have any brief thoughts to share on what well, has happened you know, to him? Eh, you know, security agencies naturally have the right to look into cases that they believe uh, could lead to a compromise of the country's security. So if an isolated incident or case, and one individual is questioned in relation to something he has said or some thoughts that he had shared. It will naturally not be too much of a problem. But we are not talking about an isolated incident in this matter. I believe the reason why there has been some hue and cry in the past week or two is that there appears to be a consistent pattern of attacks on critical voices who have dared speak out against the moral administration and very bad governance of President Akufuado. That for me is the government of the issue. Mm -hmm. It is not that one individual has been picked up or not. Because over the years, there's a litany of examples of that happening within our policy. Sometimes some overzealous security personnel overreach and do things that are completely at variance with law and order. Um, sometimes some individuals say very outrageous things. I mean, the most notable example is Kendrick Japan, who sat on TV and incited violence. In that instance, the security apparatus has no option than to apprehend such a person and see whether or not some crime has been committed. That is also clearly provided for by law. But we are not talking of that. We are talking about relatively innocuous commentary, which this president and his government have responded to in a very high-handed manner. And the objective is to silence these voices and create fear amongst those who may harbor the thought of criticizing the conduct of this government. That, for me, is the issue. Because really, when has it happened that in the space of two weeks, about four notable crises of government have been put on trial and in some instances imprisoned for something that they have said that is deemed to be unpleasant? It started with Captain Smart. Everybody knows that he is hypercritical of this government. There's nothing wrong with being hypercritical of this government. The truth is that this government has been appallingly incompetent. So even a child knows that they've been a complete waste of time. And therefore, if Ghanaians are upset with them and they bash them on a daily basis, it is to be expected. So Captain Smart has been no exception. On a daily basis, he raves and rants against this government. You may agree or disagree with his methods. You may agree or disagree with his choice of words. But he has a right to will and pillory this government in any way, shape, or form that he deems fit. That, in itself, does not constitute a crime. But... There has been a deliberate effort to look for something to pin on him in order to silence him. So we noticed that he was arrested, taken to a police station, taken to court immediately. He was granted bail, and yet he was still kept in custody till the following day, until he was located and freed. Then, a few days after that, uh, of uh, Power, Power FM, FM right. also was imprisoned after the Attorney General of President Kufado brought contempt charges against him in a high court, and he was imprisoned. Again, what he said was some commentary on what he believed to be the conduct of the judiciary, vis-a-vis -vis whether they were fair or not, or whether or not any other influence... Which was a replication of was, was, um, uh, something Kweku Skirt in America said. In, many people have said that. Right. You understand me? So he was imprisoned. Then, a few days after that... Um, I saw Mensa Thompson. I was horrified to see that he was handcuffed, bundled into a taxi, and sent to court on the charge that he had said that the president's children or relatives over the Christmas period flew in the presidential aircraft to mm -hmm. London or yes. some other place to have a good time. Now, this is an innocuous comment. Granted that what he said turned out to be untrue. I'm not sure how 
this incites any hatred or violence or a breach of the peace, for which reason anybody should be standing trial. The most that can be done is the issuance of a counter statement, clarifying whether or not indeed the aircraft had been used. Indeed, it is very easy to check whether the aircraft had been used. If you type in the tail number of the aircraft today, you will find where it has been over the period. So it is very easy to verify. So granted that what Mensa Thompson said was not true, I don't think that it warrants prosecution. The most that could have happened was the issuance of a statement to debunk, or if you like, dismiss the claim. That claim in itself cannot in any way, shape, or form constitute a breach the of the Ghana peace. Armed forces actually exactly. So the peace once, peace. once they clarify the matter, that should have ended. Right. We didn't require a situation where the man was manhandled in the manner he was handled, like a petty criminal, a petty thief, and taken to court, and he's standing trial. Then, a few days after that, in Rambo Gestapo style, Bobby Ansa is also picked up after he finishes a radio program. Indeed, I have spoken to him, and he has told me that in fact he received an invitation from the cantonment's police station, and he had negotiated the date, which is Monday, to report. Indeed, he had even offered to report earlier because he had some free time. They declined and said, oh, it's not such a serious matter. So on the day that we've agreed, come. Then before that day comes, a team of about three, uh, what do you call it, vehicles. I mean, a team of armed police officers. Four, actually. Or security, four, four vehicles, four vehicles yeah. filled with armed security officials storm his workplace and whisk him away. Was that even necessary? The, the, the brutal show of force, was it necessary? And what was the issue that he had said? That the first lady and second, no, the spouses of the president, we call the spouse of the president the first lady, and then the wife of the vice president had appropriated some state land. Again, Moro, if there's an allegation that the wife of the president and the wife of the vice president have appropriated state land, what breach of the peace does that occasion? Indeed, I can produce for you a tall list of government officials, past and present, who have bought state lands. It's a matter that we have spoken about at length. I recall that since 2000, in 2000, it was a major campaign item for us. True. So really, it is nothing new. It didn't, it didn't lead, to, lead, lead to any violence. It did not lead to any breach of the peace. It did not, yes, people can be incensed, so they may go on a tirade against public officials. They may criticize public officials very harshly. But I don't see how that breaches the peace. Secondly, the yes, first but, lady... But, but Felix, question is... No, Moro, let me like... Was it true or false? You see, whether it is true or false, it's completely immaterial. False publication. I'm saying, but, but I'm has, saying that... It has consequences. Moro, Moro, what is the consequence of saying that the first lady has acquired some land? If it is not true? I'm telling you that since 2008, I can prove for you a list that includes the likes of the late Jacobi Chibilamte and other officials under the Kufuor government who bought state land. Some of it are around this area where we speak. We published that list... We criticized them severely. Some of them were even taken to court in civil cases. What, what breach of the peace did it occasion? So if Bobia says that the first lady or the wife of the vice president have gone to acquire state lands, in what way does that breach the peace? For which reason he is arrested in this fashion? No, not, not just arrested, actually taken to court with a view to imprisoning him. Secondly, the first lady may be married to the president, but she is a private citizen. She has absolutely no role not defined by the constitution or any known legislation. She is a private citizen like you and I. The only thing is that she is married to the president. She is, she is a high-profile personality. That is the most that you can attribute to her. Mm -hmm. The wife of the vice president is a private citizen. She doesn't hold any formal office. She may get some courtesies because of who she is married to. And security may be provided here because she may become a target because of who she is married to. Beyond that, she is like you and I. So an allegation against these two individuals is like an allegation against you or against me. Moreover, if somebody publishes that I have bought state lands, indeed, I have had several allegations made against me. Yes. Some claim that I have bought house, including some of the MPP people who today are all over the place claiming that they are outraged that this has been said. That I had bought two houses, they said I had bought a Range Rover, I had done this, I had done that. If you make that allegation against me, must I bundle those people into prison for saying that? In one instance, I filed a civil suit against one of the people who made the allegation. If I'm vindicated, the most that will happen is that I will seek damages. But the person who made the allegation will never go to prison. But here, they are seeking to put Bobia in prison for saying something against the first lady and the second lady. Why? Samira Baumia. Did she not stand on the platform in 2016 and launch what I consider to be a senseless attack on President Mahama? 
basically accusing him of corruption. Should she have been arrested and imprisoned because of the false accusations she made against President Mahama? So, President Akufadu himself, will he survive any test of the truth or falsehood of claims that are made? I can tell you off the top of my head three major untruths that he peddled. Look, in 2015 in Amsterdam, he claimed that the government that I was part of had bought diaries to the tune of $10 million. It was a complete lie. On another occasion, he said that we were scheming with the Electoral Commission to rig elections and that if Ghana goes out or there's violence, the international community should not blame anybody, but themselves were sitting down and allowing this to happen. On another occasion, at the Ali Umama Memorial Lectures in 2015, he claimed that the Kaswa Interchange project had been inflated in terms of the cost. He also said that the Red Hospital project had been inflated by as much as $140 million. These were serious allegations bordering on corruption against his predecessor. I can tell you for a fact that President Akufuado can never prove this because they were lies. So technically, what he and his government are saying is that you see, when he goes out of office, the first three years after he leaves office, he is liable for prosecution for any offense because he doesn't have immunity. It's after three years that the immunity kicks in. It means that for the first years after he leaves office, technically, somebody can lodge a complaint against him for these things. And at 80 years and above, he will be put before a court with the potential for him to go to prison for saying those things. The MPP people who are all over the place, who say they are busting an archery and are outraged, would they want a situation where an 80-year-old President Kufuado is put on trial with a view to sending him to prison because he said President Obama bought diaries for $10 million, which turned out to be untrue. So these are actions of a government that is very jittery. The hopeless incompetence, their corruption and nepotism and their inability to govern properly has brought them under intense pressure and condemnation and vilification from the people of Ghana. And it is righteous. The people of Ghana are right to call out any government they believe is not performing. So that is what they have done. So because of that, they feel hemmed in. Mm. And therefore, they want to use these tactics to ward off further criticism so that in their view, they will get some peace of mind and some space to maneuver. But no public official should have the right to shield himself with laws threatening imprisonment against people who criticize them, whether they are in the executive, in the judiciary, or the legislature. And the way that we are allowing things to go in this country, we are going to descend into chaos. You see, a more brutal dictator can emerge. And as for him, even if you cough his name, he can say that he's offended, so go to prison. That is where we are going to get to if you don't put an end to this absurdity that is going on. And you see, this is happening at a time when real crimes have been committed by people aligned to this government. I spoke about Kennedy Japan. Why is he special? Does he have four legs? When he sat on national television and threatened to burn down the houses of President Mama and the lives of uh, Colonel Bebu Lati, where was the Ghana police service? Are they telling him that they did not hear those threats? He specified a crime that he was going to commit. Yet, he works a free man. If President Akufuadu indeed believes in the application of the rule of law, why has he allowed Kennedy Japan to work free? But, but, but Felix, don't you find it... Um, in, well, I'm looking for, for, for want of a better word. But I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to suggest is, look, this is the president who has been at the forefront of fighting for, for free speech. Indeed, the president is noted for the role he played in the, in the repeal of the criminal libel law. In fact, the president has said everything he has lived for is the deepening of, the, of, of free speech or the culture of free speech. Why do you think the president would want to erode all those gains? With all these allegations you're making against the him and saying, and saying the president moral, knows moral. The truth is that about not, what is happening to these journalists. The of anything. All of that was an artifice, How you know, so? a veneer to conceal his true character. It was intended to dress him up in robes that he did not really own, to mislead the people of Ghana and to give him an opportunity to become president. Really? So they say that the presidency reveals your true character. Now that he has power, we are seeing what he really believes in. Because it is incongruous. It does not make sense one bit that a man who purported to love the press so much that he, he helped to repeal a law, which said that if you're a newspaper or a media organization, you publish a story that was deemed to be false and libelous of an individual, you could go to prison. He hated that law, so had it repealed. 
Yet he loves a law. That says that if you say something that is false about his wife and the wife of the vice president, you can go to prison, like they are doing to Bobi Ansa. If the president really was at the forefront of all the things that are ascribed to him, we won't be seeing what we are seeing. He was at the forefront of nothing. It was just a self-serving activity to cloak him in the semblance of a human rights campaigner and somebody who loves free. He does not love free speech one bit. The Indeed, there's a quote. Wait, there's a quote right. attributed to him mm -hmm. where he says that he prefers a reckless press yes. to a praise singing one. Right. So let us admit without, assume without admitting that all the people who have been lined up for prosecution, mm -hmm. and you see, they have not just been arrested. Mm -hmm. They have been lined up for prosecution. And the consequence of this is that they could go to prison for saying something that the administration deems unpleasant. But the, pre the president is not the one who's going I'm to saying that, prison. Why? But they the, have been listen, listen, listen. court. The judges Moro, will Moro, determine whether Moro, or not Moro, Moro. But this who, deserves a Moro, custodial who, sentence or Moro, who not. Are them, who are arraigned them before court? What? Well, in, the the case, in the case of Ohinima Ben, it was the yes. president's attorney general. Yes. An appointee of the president. Yes. The attorney general does that on behalf of the president. Yes. But he's also the attorney general <laughs> minister of justice for the people of Ghana. How come that he is only attorney general for NDC people? He's not attending now for Kenya Japan. Who, I mean, who, he, who, no, he, no, no, he, no, 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 he, he's not attending now for Kenya Japan. He uses discretion who, no, to determine what he thinks so if that is discretion, or not. If that discretion is used unreasonably, yes. in the case of people deemed to be aligned to the NDC, yes. and that horrendous crimes committed by MPP folks are allowed to pass, you know that he's not exercising any discretion. So what is he they doing? are engaged in a hatchet job against NDC functionaries and supporters. That is what they are engaged in. And so I'm what, not going no, to but to what end? Listen. So that it cows people like myself and others who are up in arms against this government. I see. Into silence. That is what that is intended to achieve. You tell me, between these individuals and Kenya Japan, who has greater responsibility in society? He's a member of parliament. He was able to sit on TV, showed pictures of Ahmed Swali, basically put a bounty on his head and said that anybody who attacks him will be rewarded and defended by him. Within a few months of that broadcast, the gentleman involved is murdered. Not a whimper is heard from the attorney general or the police with a view to sanctioning this errant MP. The same person says on TV, threatens to burn the house of a former president and a former security coordinator. Nothing happens to him. And we are told that the AG is exercising discretion. He is not exercising discretion. They are engaged in a witch hunt, a deliberate effort to stifle free speech because they cannot contain the pressure they have come under because of their own bad governance. That is what it is about. And let us not mince words at all. Look, let's look at the issue of contempt, for instance. The same thing in the Japan. He sat on TV and abused a judge, used language that I cannot repeat here. This attorney general purported to have put him before a court for contempt. Even the judge who was sitting on the case was changed. And the excuse is that he had said that Kenny Japan should come and show why he should not commit into contempt. Meanwhile, everybody else who has gone to court for contempt has the same charge. Indeed, there's a judge who actually refers to somebody he has cited for contempt as a scoundrel. A scoundrel. That was a judge's view of the person he had cited for contempt. That case, I believe, is still pending. There was nothing wrong with it. But because a judge says that Kenny Japan should come to court and prove why he should not be committed to prison or should not be punished for saying these things, the judge was changed. I hear that in the end, he walked away with a slap on the wrist. I think he was cautioned to be of good behavior. So how come that's for Ben here? He cannot be cautioned to be of good behavior. Between Kenya Japan and the journalists, who has greater responsibility in society? Who should know much better than the other? So how is it that one set of punishment is reserved for NDC people, and NP people can walk with the most egregious crime? As I speak to you, the same president you say loves freedom. He is a human rights advocate. He was president. When terrorists, and I will not call them vigilantes, they are terrorists, that his government had armed with state resources, descended on people at Iowa so West Wagon, brutalized and maimed some of them. There is a report by the Mishot Committee which had fingered specific individuals who ought to be prosecuted for their role in that mayhem, that state-sponsored state -sponsored act of terrorism. Nothing happened. Then we go into elections. Eight Ghanaians were gunned down by security personnel loyal to this president. It's been one and a half years since those dastardly killings. The president has done absolutely nothing. And what we are concerned about is that Bobi Ansa has said that the first lady and the wife of the vice president have gone to buy land. Between these two cases, which one requires urgent attention? Which 
group of people should be prosecuted. The people who kill gun down people in broad daylight. People go to observe the collation of election results there and they are gunned down, including a 14 year old boy or girl who is young enough to be the president's grandchild. She lost it. What, what, what threat did a 14 year old girl pose to the electoral process, warranting her killing, her dastardly killing? The people who committed those crimes are working one and a half years after the incident. And we are told that the most thing, the biggest thing we should worry about in this country is that it generally says that the first lady and the wife of the vice president have gone to buy land. So there's a disprop disproportionate misuse of law against individuals. And I am saying without reservation that the reason why this is happening is that these people are critical. They are leading the effort to expose the rot the terrible governance that President Kufuad is offering. Okay. And that is why they have come under this sort of action. All and right. nothing more. So let, no, not, let nobody confuse what is happening. Okay. I, I've heard people say, for instance, that oh, the police need to sanitize the airwaves. Moro, it is not the place of the police to sanitize the airwaves. They don't have that rule. They don't have, the police is simply to ensure law and order. So if you commit a crime, they deal with you. That is their rule. It's not the police to legislate for you and me what we can say or cannot say on air. Mm -hmm. So that is not their rule. Mm -hmm. What they are doing now is the misuse of a law which is clearly outdated, anachronistic, completely antithetical to democratic values, and absurd in the extreme to target individuals who are critical of this government. That is exactly what is happening. And we must call it out for what it is. Well, in case you just joined us, I'm hosting um, Felix... Kwacho Fosu, who is the dep former Deputy Communications Minister and also an aide to the former President uh, Mahama. As you can tell, he's um, you know, taking some pot shots at uh, the government of the President, Nana Rodankwe Kofuado, and believes that the President perhaps knows about what is happening um, to journalists and wonders why the President, who um, you know, in all his life, has touted himself to be a, um, how do you call it, um, um, a human rights advocate would um, superintend over what is happening to journalists. But I asked him whether he felt or thought that what the journalist had done was right. He said, look, even if they were not right, that's not how to approach it. You, um, you, you, don't, you, you don't apply the laws in a high-handed way and also discriminately. Because there are others who have also, in, in his view, said worse things. But what has happened to them? Now, if you have any questions you want to ask me, uh, if you have any sort, sorry, contributions that you want to make to the show, please do send us a WhatsApp message to 0500 Felix Ofosu, uh, Felix Kwacho Fosu is my guest on Inside Pages. So the, the WhatsApp line is 0500, so 05000, 5000 actually, 0500 now, Felix, yes. when this matter came up, we saw some video that was circulating on social media. And in that video, you, you were justifying the arrest of Fadi Dabuzi, um, who, you know, well, who, who says he's an author. Um, I'm, I'm, as we speak, I'm told he's one of the officials, he's one of the persons who work at the uh, Flagstaff House, sorry, the Jubilee House. Now, Fadi Dabuzi in 2016 was arrested. He, he had authored a book called um, 59 Years to Nowhere. And in that book, said certain things which were deemed to be very despicable to the former president, John Dramani Mahama. And the national security guys picked him up when he came back from the UK at the Kotokai International, International Airport. Now, in this video, mm -hmm. you were seen to be justifying his arrest. First of all, you said... The Bureau of National Investigations is a state agency. It has not been run. It has not been influenced. It has not been um, manipulated by any government official. And you also believe there was nothing wrong with the way Fadi Dabuzi had been picked up and that he deserved what um, um, had happened to him because of what he had done with the publication of the book and its content. Now, the question which has been asked, or which has been, which has been, which has been posed, when, in fact, when the persons were circulating this video, uh, whether your position has changed. And if your position has changed, why has it changed? Is it a case of, um, is it a case of you also being inconsistent when it comes to your principles? Is it, first of all, 
these are. In fact, I can read to you what you said. In fact, he's been, okay. it's been captured by Ghana Web. All right, no I'm problem. aware that they have made several attempts to question him over his publication, but as far as the mode of arrest, it is not unlawful. Mm. Now, you also go on to say people have even been picked up on planes and arrested in their hideouts. So, mm. as for where you are arrested, for me, it is not material. And I don't see why his mode of arrest is being described as unlawful. And, it's, and you go ahead to say, let there not be falsehood that he was arrested because he made offensive comments and some even claim that he was arrested because he published a book. But this book was published months ago, if I'm not mistaken. So it is not on the basis upon which he was arrested. He was arrested for these specific allegations relating to the suitability of the president to continue in the office that he's holding. And it is a security matter. There is no person or security in this world that would sit aloof. Mm -hmm. According to you, Fadi's arrest was, has nothing to do with political affiliation with the MPP and pleaded the Ghanaians to refrain from bringing in politics. But you are questioning if Fadi would have been able to write any such publications about the Lebanese Prime Minister and go scot free without being interrogated by the security agencies. And the video is out there. But Some of course, feel that your posture, your posture has changed. First of all, these are essentially enablers of dictatorship. Those who cite this as a justification. That's how for, you describe them? But they are enablers of dictator. You see, how so? I, they are not able to see that what their president and government are doing is right. They are saying that oh, it was done before. That has not me. They should be able to say that, oh, what our president is doing is right. That you can target journalists in this way and seek to imprison them. Take them to court and have them imprisoned because they've said something you don't like. Maybe they also, maybe they also no, say, maybe they also say no, you don't have the moral, no, so let me come the to moral the justification Fadi to complain Dabusi, today. Fadi Dabusi is easily one of the vilest propagandists the MPP has. And indeed, you say that he works at the office of the president. So it shows that President Kufuado does not have a difficulty with people saying things that are unpleasant about others, right? So the first question you ask is that if he had a difficulty with what Bobi and Sai and Ku are saying, why is he harboring somebody like that? And you should read some of the things that Fadi Dabusi says. The specific publication I, I was telling you, it was so vile, so filthy, that I cannot repeat what he said here. But at that time, there were lies that he had been tortured, he had been mistreated, which I clarified. And it's important that people listen to the entire tip. They've cut one minute, 34 yes, seconds, yes. in order to create a false impression. But if you listen to the full tip, I gave the reason why they had done that. When you asked me about Oliver, I told you that the security apparatus of any country if they deem that you've done anything that undermines the security of the state, they have a right to look into it. And they've done it to Oliver. I've not sat here to condemn the BNI, have I? Have I condemned the BNI? No, you have it. No. To you, yes. So it's the same principle. What I have taken issue with is the criminalization of speech. You notice that Fadi Dabusi, indeed, let me tell you, when they arrested him and questioned him over the allegation, the allegation it is so vulgar, I cannot repeat it here. That is the only reason why I'm not mentioning the specific matter. But you also criticized how Bobi Ansa was picked up. You, you described it as But Fadi, Fadi was not picked up by a team of men sitting in four vehicles with AK-47s. He was picked up at the airport when he arrived. So he was asked to accompany some men to BNI. Okay. Bobi Ansa had booked a date with the police to report. And so there was, there was clarity as to the mode of reportage or the reporting. There was an agreement which this government violated in Gestapo style. That was not the case in Fadi Dabusi. Fadi Dabusi was not in Ghana when he was being looked for. So when he came down, they picked him up and sent him to the BNI for questioning. Same has been done to Oliver. And I have not condemned that. Because I think that it is proper to look into the matter, to okay. see whether there's any basis. So your position, so your, when, your principles when, haven't changed. They haven't changed. When Fadi was sent to the BNI and they questioned him about the publication, he admitted that they were lies and that he published it because he was angry that people were saying some things about President Kufa mm -hmm. and that he had no basis. So it was established that what he said was a lie. But did anybody put, put Fadi before court? Did anybody imprison Fadi like they attempted to do to these people? So the security agency can look into an allegation. Look, the allegation involving the first lady and the second lady, in any serious jurisdiction, the investigation would be about whether or not these two people have used their proximity to power to acquire land illegally. And then based on that, action will be taken against them. Here, we are looking into punishing the person who made the allegation. The two are not the same. Right. Somebody says the first lady and the wife of the vice president have gone to buy land illegally. Mm -hmm. As to whether it is true or not, as I sit here, I do not know. 
But I'm saying that in a jurisdiction where things work properly, the target will not be the journalists. They will not put the journalists before court to imprison him. They will look into whether or not these two ladies, based on their proximity to power, have done anything irregular to acquire these lands, if it is true. If they find that it is not true, the matter dies. But the journalists will not be prosecuted and jailed. What these two people can do is to file a civil suit seeking mm -hmm. damages for defamation of character, as right. I have done mm -hmm. in a case that somebody made against me. Yes. But the idea that you can be arrested is not in doubt. It is not in doubt. Right. When the security agencies believe that mm -hmm. you have done something that compromises the security mm -hmm. of the country, but you, see, you can do that. But you see, in the case... Yeah, in, go in, ahead. One, in one breath, mm -hmm. in one breath, mm -hmm. you seek to criticize the president or mm -hmm. to blame the president, mm -hmm. Ekufuado, for what mm -hmm. is happening mm -hmm. to these journalists. Yes. But in another breath, in fact, in the case of Fadi Dabuzi, mm -hmm. you say this disassociates the president from what is happening to Fadi Dabuzi because the BNI is a state institution. But you see, there is a part, listen, so, so, no, no, you see, so, I have told so you. So the question Moro, Moro. your critics are asking you is Moro, Moro. what has changed? Moro, what has changed is that this president has shown more than enough will to go after people who disagree with him. He started this in opposition. As leader of the MPP, we all know what he did to uh, Paul Afoko, Kabine Japan, and Sami Krab. The terrorists who have become an albatross around our neck now were used to hound these people because they disagreed. They publicly criticized President Kufuado. Is it not a matter of fact? Did President Kufuado not bring mercenaries from South Africa to train these terrorists? Is it not a matter of fact? Yeah, but does that constitute... Did, did yeah, Paul Afoko that... not say, listen, did mm -hmm. Paul Afoko not say mm -hmm. that as national chairman, he was done with horror as he brought in people from Serbia to train MPP activists in what they call attacking, assaulting the pillars of the state? And is it not a matter of public record that these invisible forces, Delta forces, Volta crocodiles, Borga Budos, and those who are loyal to President Kufado attacked people who criticized President Kufado internally? So the man was able to pluck feathers from a tortoise. And you think that when he gets a chicken, that chicken will go scot-free. Was it not his attorney general who, who cited Ben here for contempt and he's languishing in prison now? And the attorney general works directly for the president. If the president is not interested in that matter, he will stop the attorney general. I see. How is it that that same attorney general is unable to prosecute anybody affiliated with the MPP? And the president finds nothing wrong with it. Okay. So there's no dispute that if... It was if Bobi Ansa had said what he said about you, he would not be facing prosecution. Assuming that he had said that you had acquired state land illegally, he wouldn't be facing prosecution. But because he said something about the president's wife, the vested interest is there. It is, it is all present over this matter. Again, the consequences that follow the arrest of a journalist is all too clear. President Akufuadu's interest is to see the imprisonment of his critics. That is different from looking into an allegation that has been made, as is the case with Vomawo and Fadi Dabusi as I raised them. So those people seeking to defend President Akufuadu's atrocities with what I said are enablers of tyranny. You see, let them go ahead and defend this kind of action. Only two days ago, they were all over the place claiming that the minority had presented a kick to the majority leader, right? Yes. So that has been established to be a lie because mm -hmm. according to the minority leader himself, he received a cake from somebody he knows, a man, not yes. to be a businessman, not a politician yes. or a member of parliament. So all those who publish that, who are members of the MPP, have published a falsehood, right? Are they not in breach of section 207 and 208 of the Public Order Act? So why is it that they are not standing trial for saying something that is false? Okay. And President Akufadu himself, like I asked, will he accept that when he leaves office, now he has immunity because he's president, a complaint should be lodged against him for saying that President Mama bought diaries for $10 million, which turned out to be false, would he accept, based on the principle he's espousing, mm. that the police picks him up at 80 years old and above and puts him before court with a view to imprisoning him for saying something that is not true? Okay. So let nobody attempt All right, okay. to compare apples with oranges and defend clear wrongdoing. Let me, what let me, is happening? And Moro, you should be worried as a journalist. Technically, mm. if you get a news bulletin wrong, what is the police can come for you and prosecute okay. you. That's what they are saying. But right. it should not be the case.